Chi Hao. How are you doing? Hey, what's up? Um, so what are you going to showcase today? So I usually use this for deck building, but this is one of the one easy and nice way to check for deck consistency. Um, I, I, other people have used this before, so I can't say it's mine, but it's a very nice way to just quickly or if, right before a tournament you want to see if your card choice is good to see if it's if your deck is consistent or if your tech choices do the job they should. Mm -hmm. So you want to check like um, how to make this decision as well as how to make sure that you can also counteract your opponent as well at the same time. Yep, yep. So the easiest example is probably Sky Strikers because everyone knows Sky Strikers. We all know what it does. And first you got to ask yourself, what's the goal of your deck? What's the first thing you want to do? So the first thing you want to do in Sky Strikers, when you go first, is to get Ray on the field. So in every five card hand, are you able to get Ray off the field? So you can do a lot of things. You can look through probabilities, you can do this. This is my way. I know there's a lot of other ways, so let me just go through it. Okay, so what, how are you going to check this see? So I first will shuffle my deck. Okay. And I'll just do like any shuffle, doesn't matter. And then what you do... Step one. Step shuffle one, deck. shuffle. <laughs> Then step two, take the top five cards okay. and fan it out. So this is a one possible hand. Okay. Then take the next five and fan it out. And repeat this until uh, your deck is done. So it's like if it's 40 cards, it's five, 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 five. You have eight five card hands. I feel like this is faster than just doing solitaire, because you can solitaire your deck all day, and you can never really find out your consistency. This is one of the better ways to do it, and faster, more efficient ways. Really fast. So, in your 40 card deck, you have a possibility of five cards, right? So, these could be your opening hand in each of them. So, you're going to ask yourself in each one, can you get to Ray on your first five cards? Okay. This one, you have Ray. That's a good, so that's a check. Do you have Ray here? You don't have a Ray here. So, you put this to the side. This is, is going to be something we'll analyze a little later. This one, do we have a ray here? No, so we go back over there and analyze it. Look at this. Can we get a ray? Oh, we can, kind of. with these two. So yep. it's maybe not the best hand, but you can definitely still play with this hand going first. Yep. Do you have a ray? Yes, you have a ray, so that's good. Um, do you have a ray here? No, you don't have a ray here, so you okay. put that in. Do you have a ray? Yes, you have engage and you have plays. Can you get a ray here? Yes, you can. So out of out of a possibility of of eight hands, yep. three of them are not optimal. So now I'm gonna look at it and say, how is this not optimal? We look at this. So let's look at the first. Let's look at our first hand. Why is this not optimal? Um, you have a lot of other tech choices, but your combo pieces doesn't flow together. Yep. You might have this that can give you a metaphor fusion and get a draw, but that's all you're banking on. Uh -huh. What about this? You have another, one. another foolish goods, which again you're banking on a draw, but nothing to really give you any proactive plays. Yep. How about this? Same thing. You don't have anything that gives you any proactive. You have a lot of reactive plays, yep. not a lot of proactive plays. So, what card in these five card hands give you? What is most common within these three card three hands? So I see impermanence, right? Impermanence might be the culprit here. So how many impermanence did you play? Three. Three. Okay, so you might ask yourself, do I need to cut impermanence from three to two? Is that really a card I want to see every single time in my opening hand? What else is here? Um, I also see bells. How many bells do you play? Two. Two, okay. So bell is a card you play two of, but it might be good, but you, want, you still want to ask yourself if bell is something that you want to... Is this going to sacrifice my consistency? You also play Cold by the Grave and One Shared Ride. So it's one of those things. But right now, the one card I'm looking at is Impermanence. So let's try this one more time. You can do this as many times as you want. I like doing it like maybe three times, four times usually. If, say like you have one tech choice that you're not sure about, or if you want to cut a card and you don't know what card to cut. This is a really good way to kind of weed you out through that without having a deck test, go through hours and hours of deck testing to find out the same answer. Let's go. So just yeah. Alright, so let's look at each hand and see what we got. Okay. This is good, this is playable because you have a drone. That's good. Um you have two field spells, but then you're not, you're not you're gambling, you're not guaranteed here. 
Um, so let's put this over here. Yeah. This is good. This is not bad because you haven't engaged any. Any um, hand of engage is always pretty good. Engage as well. This one you can you can sort of still play through it with these two cards to set it and pop it if you have to. So this has two raise, so that's good. And then this is another hand that we're not too sure about. Okay. So after doing after doing it the second time, you kind of see the problem again. Impermanence is always the culprit, right? With every every brick hand you have, impermanence seems to be the culprit. So this is where you can ask yourself. Instead of playing three impermanences, why not play two? You know, so this is easy. So instead of having those going through like so much hours of deck testing, just take one out. Now you want to play two impermanences and not um, and not three, and then you can replace this one impermanence with consistency cards. Something like another foolish barrel of goods. Um, maybe three foolish barrel goods. Maybe uh, another field spell. You know, whichever you choose. But you know what your culprit. You know what card you have to take out. To increase your consistency. Let's try it out. Yeah. I took um, the permanence out and I put in an area zero. Let's see how it goes this time. Now I can put that in permanence in your trade binder. Yeah. It wants to trade. All right, let's try this one last time. Mean dog, face it, y'all. All this heat, I could battle hell. I spit the bars and get you locked in the shadow realm. I battle well. This Again, this you might have to repeat this maybe like four or five times to really do it. But this is just a nice way to show um, how this can work. Let's look through every single hand. Can you play with this? Can you get it to ray with your hand or play? Yes. Right? You have a ray. Yes. You have an engage. Yes. You have a reinforcement army. No, no, but okay. Put it aside. Let's put it to the side. Yes, you have a ray. Um, yes, you have a you have an engage. And ray. And ray. Um, yes, because you have the multi roll and area zero combo. Uh -huh. And yes, because you have engage. Uh -huh. So that now one that one card changed everything. Because if you look and see how when we look at our hand. Um, we always had two, two to three dead hands, right? Yeah. Now out of eight ha possible hands, you have only one dead hand. So you keep repeating this process over and over again if you want to take out another card. Um, but it's usually just one or two that, that's really the, um, uh, that's sick in the mud. And once you get rid of that, it should really, it should help you in, in increasing your um, consistency. Okay, wow. Yeah. Awesome. So this one card made it 3.88 to 1.88. Yeah, that one card made a difference. Yeah, that one card really did make a difference. So, so now you know it. You play 3 or 0. Make sure you draw Ray and take out one card as utility. You don't have to. You can, you can replace with any card you want. I'm forcing them to. Yeah.